The Art Center inspires creativity and contributes to community well-being through equitable access to and engagement with visual arts. We collaborate to offer exhibitions, learning opportunities, artist development, and cultural events centered on art, artists, and art enthusiasts in the greater Corvallis area. Welcome to TAC Makes a Podcast. I'm Jenny Castle, the curator at the Art Center in Corvallis, Oregon. Today I'm here with Renee Couture, who is showing work in our Corinne Woodman Gallery, August 8th through September 16th. The title of her series is Soft Ambition, and she's here to talk a little bit about that work with us today. Welcome, Renee. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so glad you had time to talk with us today about your work um, that we're going to be showing in the Corinne Woodman in about a, about a week and a half. We're going to hang it. So I'm very excited about that. Renee, can you talk to us a little bit about your work that it will be on exhibit in the Corinne Woodman and how that series came to be? Yeah, so this work is actually from 2021, which made my daughter around a year and a half to two years old at the time that I was producing, trying to, I guess I should say, produce this work. And toddlers are busy people. You really don't have, um, it feels as though you don't have a ton of time to keep some parts of yourself sort of alive and going. And, and, this work is really showing the rhythms of my day uh, and some of the mundaneness of parenting because um, it can be very, very mundane at times uh, where I get bored out of my skull. But at the same time, on the flip side, it, it can be really exciting um, and and wonderful. It, it's these two things at once. And I have, sometimes I want to, um, gosh, just run for the hills. And, um, but I don't get to, you know? Uh, And so this work shows the rhythms of my day and really kind of um, some of my struggles in a lot of ways. There's a lot of repetition in this particular, and I would call it one work. I think of it as one piece and more on the lines of a very, it's almost clinical, oddly. Um, And maybe it's my own desperation uh, toward (laughs) wanting order (laughs) or some semblance of order in my life. Um, and it's really me working in the way that I could work, which at the time was with, I think my iPhone six or something like that, just capturing these moments really. Um, and then repeating them and, and a viewer will see that the images increase or decrease in size. Um, and that's really in many ways relational, at least in my mind, to breathing, these sorts of inhales and exhales, these moments that in a day become conflated or or then slowly pass. Uh, and it, so the work is just showing these random little moments throughout the course of the day. And um, we haven't installed the work in the gallery yet, so I haven't had a chance to see this in person, but I'm looking at samples that you sent. And um, it is, it's it's like a single image that repeats kind of back into space mm-hmm. um, or or a, a large moment gets smaller and you can kind of see time passing. Um, and um, so there's not a lot of variation of image, but which I think speaks, like you said, the repetition and the monotony of the day, but um, you seem to, you see time passing, the, the, the work seems full and busy. Um, and I find this work interesting because I've seen the installation work you've done in the past, which has a much um, 
it, it is much more busy and full of 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 elements and and you and you inner you interweave and and um, are kind of spontaneous in the way that you install and this is very grid like and and thought through can you talk a little bit about um why you made those choices and like maybe which ones were were choices and which ones were out of circumstance and you just kind of embraced it um I can try to. <laughs> sure, that, that's what this is um, all about, right? <laughs> I can sure try to. Um, well, I think what I've done anyway with parenting mm -hmm. is for my own um, sanity, perhaps, um, and to try to maintain some semblance of order in a very chaotic time is just create a structure in the day. And at that time, the day was quite structured, a lot of it around nap time, um, which is probably the most important time <laughs> for so many reasons. Uh, and so it made sense to have this sort of similar structure in the work uh, because it would be, you know, morning, nap time, afternoon partner comes home hallelujah bedtime and it's you know and it's like these blocks of time uh that um that have these things that happen well and blocks of time that you get yourself back in a different way too right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and sometimes have to really sacrifice myself too, right? There's one set of images there was um, when my daughter was sick. And so instead of nap time, when I would really kind of recharge my batteries, I'm in, it's instead I'm in this darkened room and I'm holding her mm -hmm. during nap time because she was sick and just really needed me, right? Um, as well as, you know, the time when she wanted to give me every single stuffed animal that she had. And so I just become this kind of like a toy box that's holding all of these stuffed animals or the end of the night when um, <clears throat> people take a shower, unwind, and instead I'm taking a bath with this child, which is very sweet on, on the one hand, but also... Um, kind of has its challenges, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right? Um, autonomy in a way, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and then the work also has these pictures in there of just my stomach and me breathing. And, um, and there's a, I've found comfort sometimes in, in saying to myself um, that I don't, you know, basically this too shall pass this, this moment, uh, but I only have to get through this one minute and just breathing and trying to calm myself yeah. down um, as things become difficult, right? Um, there's also some images of me saying, hey, Suri, you know, how, how many minutes until noon? because that's when nap time was. Um, and um, that's when I would get sort of a break. And yeah. just the period of guessing, hey, sorry, when will this happen? It's a really interesting way to look at time. And um, uh, and and I, I, you have, you are a, a new mother. And she, how old is your daughter now? Now she's four. Okay. But yeah, this, this was this a, your first child and your and your only child. And and so this was a whole new experience and a whole new way of thinking about time and your day and your um independence. Yeah, especially since prior to that, um, I had my day flowed in a really had a very different rhythm and I was always doing things, but I could kind of pick and choose when things needed to happen, what doing what made sense at any given time. And now it's, it's simply not like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the new, re it's a new reality after many years of being married and having a very different life. 
Uh, and then having a major life change. Yeah, a structure imposed on you, a, cha- a continuously changing structure. <laughs> continuously, yeah, absolutely, a continuously changing structure. And and then you couple all of that sort of stuff with the unreality of perfect Instagram shots and uh and in some cases for me the sort of um I understand why people just sort of click and buy things you know you know weighted blanket the little the little outfit with the egg to help them sleep um some toy it's it's like one part hope one part desperation that it will work (laughs) you know, and that you can get some sleep. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a completely, it's a completely different life. My days are, are not my own anymore. And, uh, that's, that's hard. It is, has been challenging. And then you couple a lot of that with postpartum depression and that's hard too. Right. Yeah. Do you think, um, well, I don't, and we can cut this out if you're not comfortable talking about it, but is that something that you dealt with? And do you think that this work um, was created in part to cope with those feelings? Oh, definitely. I definitely see artwork at this point for sh- as a lifeline to make sense of and and have a place to put all of these emotions you know, and and I think it's a nice, healthy spot to put them. I find it cathartic. Um, I, you know, I don't want to call it art therapy because I think art therapy is really quite focused on just getting the getting feelings out, and it doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm still really thinking about the principles and elements of art and and arrangement uh, and um, craftsmanship and 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 some some things that are, that drive uh, how things are displayed and, and media that's used, but also some of what's driving the media that's used is just simply, I have access to my phone right now and I can bring my phone into the bathtub in a way that I would not be comfortable bringing my much larger, more expensive camera with a nice lens <laughs> into the bathtub, right? <laughs> Um, and I can, during quick moments, I can dip in and out of Photoshop and do things. Right. So, so some of this stuff is, is driven by, uh, just kind of what makes sense to allow me to keep working, to keep making some things. And, um, and I'm, and I'm, most definitely thankful for that, right? I mean, doctors, when you go to a doctor there, they ask you how much exercise you get, how much water you get, how much, you know, wine you, how much alcohol you consume in a week, but they never ask if you have a creative practice, if you do anything creative in your life. And, you know, maybe that should be a question that gets asked because it's, it's a, it's a place to make, it can be a place to make sense of things. Um, and to wrestle with questions and feelings and emotions. And so this, you know, it's, it's my outlet and it it also has allowed me to hold on to a piece of myself, my before self, even though the work is very much about my current self, it's allowed me to hang on to this piece of myself that um, everywhere else in my life, pieces of myself felt like they were being smothered by this tiny human who I love very much. But um, so that's another reason why I just want to make this work, want to make work, want to make anything, want to be in the studio. Can you, um, and I, what you're saying, it brings me back to a question I wanted to ask about the title, the soft ambition. Um, and I, I read into it a lot of different ways. I mean, because you were, I mean, you are a serious artist, but you were producing a lot of work before becoming a mother. And that, I mean, you can speak to this, but that may have shifted. And I mean, although you have 
you know, a solo exhibition in our small Korean women gallery, and you're also showing work in the around Oregon. I mean, you are producing, but I'm sure it doesn't feel like you said the same rhythm. Um, so is that is so I, I read into it as maybe soft ambition, meaning like you're shifting your ambitions of your professional career right now or but I also see it as like this softness and motherhood and the relationship with your child so um can you speak to why you chose that title and and how it yeah it's relevant yeah um feel as though mother has made me softer as a as a human as a person because I have to have com- a ton of compassion for myself, <laughs> number one, but also compassion for what my daughter, all the new things that she's learning, all of her frustrations, all of her joy, like all of these different things. Um, so having to have empathy or compassion, try to remember what, not that any of us remember this, but what was it like to be two, three, four, mm-hmm. right? And the newness of everything. Um, so there's that part about softening as far as ambitions go yeah priorities change priorities shift i think particularly during this time where the tiny human could actually launch themselves off the deck and yeah you know, like, human being needs you for survival right like yeah, they really need me for for survival and um some days when i have these long to-do lists and i'm thinking about this to-do list and i'm so often I say, I just need to chuck that, that just, that causes me stress. Just today is about getting through today, yep. <laughs> actually. Survive <laughs> another day. Like that's what to, is what today is about. Yeah. You know, today is about getting through today with everyone still alive. Uh, and that's a win. You know, that's what I have to remind myself on really challenging days. And then there are other days that are, it's the best day in the whole world. But there's definitely days that are quite challenging, you know, and so some of the other parts of the piece are these, um, they're like these flocked objects. And some of them are the traditional things that you would think about when people would bronze baby shoes, only these shoes are flocked and a little onesie that's flocked and it's kind of, there's pearls in the shoes, like stuffed in the shoes, a ladder that's kind of like crumpled on the floor, some dried flowers, a little cloche with a Zoloft pill on there. Um, You know, just these, just these things, um, some of them that are hers that are hung at the height that she was at the time of the making of the piece um, and are the same color as her bedroom. Some of the other pieces are um, my flesh tone. And same with, similarly with the backgrounds, some of the, the backgrounds of the piece fade from blue to a sort of peachy color. Well, I love that you're equally honoring her in the choices that you're making with the installation and being honest about the struggles of being her mother. And it seems to be... Um, balanced um and the way you're talking about it i can't wait to see the installation in person because and i hope everyone listening goes and sees it too (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but you know like the way you're talking about the work i think mimics how i've seen you install other work the elements you're choosing and and the relationship to the body how you're thinking about it in that way um but it's really beautiful how you're talking about the choices you've made that speak to who she was as a person during this time when you were kind of like trying to find yourself in a really difficult situation. Yeah. And I'll be really curious how it looks in the gap in that space because it's a much smaller space. And so I'm wondering if it'll just be more compressed and if it'll feel full in, in a different way. Whereas in one of the images I sent you, it's sort of like this drawn out, long piece, which at the time, I mean, and the days still do feel long, but at that, I remember at the making of this, at that time, you know, the days felt so long and like seven or eight, when she would go down to bed, you know, I would literally be so exhausted 
right? You know, now the days still feel long. Maybe I'm just used to the that feeling, but where it feels like there's so much in the day. So I'm wondering if the new, if how I install things in the gallery will sort of reflect that fullness, that busyness because of the of the space and, and what the space will dictate uh, for how things are installed. I'm curious and nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I think that I, I love the way you're thinking about it and I can't wait to see what comes of it. And I and the relationship between all the different elements. It'll be, yeah, uh-huh. you're gonna have to re you have to rethink that a little bit in this space. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so in that way, the in- installing it is almost like a painting, right? The way that painters can work, where like you kind of daub some paint and then stand back and see what's happening or or in a drawing where you make some marks and step back and see what's happening and then make some more and figuring things out as I go, which is completely reflective of my life <laughs> these days. No, well, I, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how you approach installation work, because um, I think it's a very unique skill and you've been doing it various ways throughout your artistic career. I mean, I think the first piece I saw that you made, you were actually installing in the landscape, like outside. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, I've seen your work installed in other galleries where it kind of spills out from corners. And I mean, you're talking about like the paint color of her room being incorporated into this, but you were like making wallpaper before. Like, anyway, I can see so many links um, across the board. And I, I think it's really beautiful how at least the artists I know, I can see it, see you so clearly in the work. But if you can talk generally about installation work and if anyone is interested in doing this type of work like i would just love to kind of hear your thoughts on how you I know that's a really big question sorry we don't have to go into it but i think that um it's not always something that we're talking about a space that you haven't been in with the work yet right and you're gonna have to show up and you're gonna have to think about those two elements being combined so can you maybe talk a little bit about that process and the things that you'll try to reconcile for yourself? Yeah. So some of that is for me. Well, I think having pictures helped. Thank you for that, by the way, and having measurements. Sometimes what I'll do is try to get a general idea of the space. And that can mean going up on part of my property and actually flagging out the basic dimension so that I can kind of really get a sense of scale. Some of it is going into Photoshop and kind of playing around with where things could go to have at least a little bit of a map, a little bit of an idea. And then for me, when getting to the space, I'll probably just sit for a little bit and just be there for a little bit. And then I'll start playing a little. In this particular instance, I'll play around, move things around, see what fits, figure out if everything doesn't fit, what's really important, what absolutely has to go there. And so it's kind of about having a loose plan, at least for me, and then being willing to change the plan. Fortunately for me, all of this stuff is very lightweight. It's not like I'm having to think about how to hang something up from a really high ceiling beam and can the beam support the work. And fortunately, all of this stuff also will fit in my car pretty easily and I can schlep it myself. I'm not having to um, find a person or rent a larger vehicle to get it here and there. I know it will fit through a door, (laughs) right? So it's like there are some things that help you make the decisions for you when doing some of this work. One of, uh, I mean, one of my rules is, can I fit it in my car? Can I fit it through a door? Can I carry it myself? You know, these are all seemingly silly, but actually quite important. If you can't get it through a door, it doesn't matter how awesome it is. And so, and hopefully it's awesome. Does it need to come apart? How can it go together again easily? So those are just some of the things that that I think about. Yeah, generally it's kind of coming into a space in my case, just with my fingers crossed and really hoping that it all works out. 
Yeah. I'm going with your gut in the end, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going with your gut in the end. Absolutely. But plan, but you know, but having a, having a plan for sure is important. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think, I mean, we've, I've been getting more and more applications that are considering mm-hmm. installation work in different ways. And I yeah. think that the Corinne Woodman Gallery is good for playing with that. Like mm-hmm. the first time it's not, like you said, it's not, you know, it, you can't. It's not a gigantic warehouse that you have to fill. Yeah, right. exactly. And so it's more about editing down so that it feels right than making, right. You know, making more. And so, yeah, I loved hearing your insights on that. And thank you for sharing with everyone. Yeah. And I think editing, as far as editing down, I mean, that's the biggest, I think, trick for any artist. And and I don't even want to call it a trick. I, I actually want to call it a skill is that editing skill, right? Yeah, taking out that one thing that you love on its own, but it doesn't fit that day with whatever else you're showing is a very hard thing to learn. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's almost that whole, you can't sacrifice everything for that one thing. Yep. And um, that, yeah, it is a very hard skill because we get emotionally attached to our own work and, and sometimes can't see it clearly. And so I find it interesting that you see all of these parallels between my past work. And there was a marked shift in my work after post like PB and like post baby. And I guess PB pre baby. (laughs) I don't know. Um, There was a, but there was a very big shift and probably I, you know, at one point I, I knew that I wanted to shift, make some shifts in terms of content that I was exploring. Baby happened and suddenly I am off. And for me, the wild west of, of things and, and really everything changed where before I was all researched and reading books and really planning things out hardcore before getting into making things. And then, you know, at this point, I kind of feel like I'm living the research, number one. Um, But I'm also really kind of following my nose a little bit, you know, sort of like a dog on a walk, how a dog will just sniff one rock forever and then feline somewhere else. That's sort of what I'm doing. And I'm kind of letting some of these experience I don't know, maybe it's like a river, like, oh. like motherhood is the the river that's shaping this landscape. That is me now. I'm not sure. <laughs> and maybe it's half and half, right? You have, like, half and, yeah, you have, absolutely. You have one paddle, right? And you're like, yeah, I, got, yeah, I have one paddle, you know, uh, a sandbag bucket sometimes, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So I'll conclude with um, asking you, because this interview will come out Mm -hmm. when Soft Ambition is in the Corinne Woodman, but the Around Oregon Biennial will be up in the main gallery and you have a work in that show as well at the same time. Do you want to talk a little bit about that piece? Is it linked to this work or does it feel separate? Um, Well, it came after that work. Uh, and I did a lot of the photographing of that piece when I was at Pine Meadow Ranch in uh, Central Oregon. It's a really sweet new residency program. And how that work came about was looking through old photo albums. And I found a picture of my brother and I in one of those peephole um, things where you could be a muscle man or smiling mm-hmm. piece of corn or whatever. And um, and I found this picture of my mother holding me. And so it's actually, and so I cut her face out. You know, that work is really almost like me trying to get to my younger self. Mm-hmm. When you have a child, all the baggage comes out, including the baggage you thought you dealt with. You realize that there is more there that you haven't dealt with and you're surprised by it and you have to deal with it. Right. Especially if you don't want to pass certain things on to your child. So it's really about me and also kind of, again, trying to have that compassion for my child, but also for my parents. Right. It's 
very easy to um, to critique our parents. I think you learn as a parent that parents are just doing their best with the tools they have. So this work is just me trying to get to my younger and in some ways trying to engage with my younger self and wrestle with with some of that baggage that I carry that informs my parenting for better or worse. Well, I'm excited that they will be in the art center together and people can Mm -hmm. kind of see the juxtaposition of work made when your daughter was one and two and then like three, three and four ish time. Yeah, when she was three, I think three and a half when that work was no two and a half and i'm a and i'm a little older in that particular image than than she was when it was being made but yeah similar age generational links are happening and really yeah it was it was fun work to make i'm excited to get to show it there we're excited to host you um renee thank you for talking with me today Um, I will once again announce that Renee Couture's work, Soft Ambition, will be in the Corinne Woodman Gallery August 8th through September 16th. She also has a piece in the Around Oregon Biennial, which opens on August 3rd. The reception for both shows will be on August 17th from 5.30 to 7. So come meet Renee and all the other artists that are part of our Around Oregon show um, and have, you know, a little wine and some snacks and some good conversation with those 25 artists. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening to TAC Makes. This is a new creative project at the Art Center, and I hope you enjoy our learning curve as much as we do. You can find more episodes on YouTube and Spotify and on our website, theartscenter.net. That's arts with an S.